Hey, I'm Doug and welcome to Doppler's Gear Garage for the second of three videos on the limited edition JP2C112 combo. In the first video, John Petrucci and his longtime tech, Matty Schifferstein, spent the better part of 45 minutes unpacking the backstory of the combo, the design process for the JP2C, and more. The link for that is down below in the description. This time around, I'm going to be demoing my way through the key features and functions with some input from John and Maddie. Then in the third video, I'm going to be putting together a crazy JP2C driven rig with, again, some input from Maddie. All right. In case you didn't see the first video, we're going to kick things off with a quick overview about the JP2C 112 combo from Mr. John Petrucci himself. For the first time, we've taken the JP2C head and presented it as a 1x12 combo amplifier. It's portable, it's powerful, it packs a punch, and it's the perfect addition to your boogie arsenal, the JP2C combo. One of my favorite live rigs is my JP2C head into a pair of oversized rectifier cabinets. Just a massive sound. And the great thing about this amp, per John's comment about portable, powerful, and packs a punch, it takes the essence of that and packs it into an open back 112 enclosure that's loaded with the Celestian Custom 90. Those guys are the vintage 30s, 60 watts rated a piece. This guy's rated a 90 watts. And the thing that I love about this is it really takes the essence of that, but takes a giant load off your back if you don't want to haul those things around. To try and capture the girth of this thing, I've close mic'd it with a Royer 121 and an SM57, no EQ, but I did double track the guitars to again, to try and capture the girth of how huge this thing sounds in the room. In the first video, John credits Raina, his wife, as being the first person to suggest doing one of these as a combo. And we also talked about the fact that Maddie Schifferstein, John's longtime tech, actually assembled the very first one of these as a Christmas present for John, which means from the inside out, Maddie really knows what these amps are and what they can do. The JP2C combo is very traditional in the sense of what a boogie combo is. Uh, it's loud and can be aggressive and can do everything that you would do with a 412 cabinet or a 212 cabinet or whatever you're using. Uh, but you can pick it up, throw it in your back of your car, go on stage, go to any sort of gig, put it in your living room. It'll do anything you want. In case you didn't know, the JP2C is based on the Mark 2C Plus, arguably the most classic boogie that's out there. As much as that amp put boogie on the map in terms of high gain tones, and as much as this combo does a great job of capturing the vibe and essence of larger cabinets, because it's an open back 112 enclosure, it's also great for clean tones. This amp is so special to me because it's my JP2C head just put into a 1x12 cabinet and uh, you know that to me that's the classic boogie and you could take that to a gig and just have everything that you need. When I think of classic boogie it takes me back to 1981 when I picked up my Mark IIb from the factory and Mike B was the guy that showed me how to use it. Right around that same time John Petrucci got on the phone for the very first time with Doug West. The people that have made Mesa Boogie who they are, are still there. And that's one of the things that makes these amps so special. So when I think of that classic Boogie tone, this next demo does a perfect job of exemplifying what I'm talking about. I'm in the third channel without a huge amount of drive. We'll talk more about that when we get to the feature set. But what's happening is I hit the note, turn towards the amp, and this note blooms into this cascading feedback where it's filling the room, not just from the front of the amp, but from the back of the amp. And that to me is the classic boogie tone. The classic boogie one by 12, I mean, that's, that's a staple. You know, I have a bunch of them in my house in different forms, whether it be a Mark four or something else. Um, playing uh, a head through a one by 12, I mean, you know, that even goes back to uh, the Images and Words album was all 1x12, you know. I mean, if you have a, a great cabinet and speaker and you mic it properly, 
it's a really focused sound. With the exception of the intro at the top of this video, all the guitar sounds you've heard were utilizing the built-in speaker captured with a Royer 121 and a Shure SM57. Blended together, no EQ. You heard the Strat in channel one, you heard the seven string in channel two, and you heard this Kramer in channel three. Moving forward, all the guitar sounds you're gonna hear are gonna be captured utilizing the built-in cab clone, which I absolutely loved using. I'm a cab clone IR fanatic, so when I started working with Zamp, I was really curious what it was gonna be like tracking with cab clone, and it was an amazing experience, and I'm not the only person that thinks it's awesome. The cab clone built into the JP2C was a, a really cool feature for us. Uh, you know, it gives you the ability to shut a speaker off and just record silently, use headphones for practice if you, you know, you're in an apartment or something like that. Even on the road, we've done it where I can just put an amp in the dressing room and John could put headphones on and and uh, use it with the cab clone. But the cool thing is, you know, we we do have the cab clones hooked up live. Our front of house guy can use them uh to kind of blend in a little bit if he needs to to get the guitar to sit in the mix a little better um than ju with just the microphones but you know if you're just using straight cab clone and going direct it's like with anything if you use a 412 or a 212 or 112 whatever your cabinet of choices whatever your speaker choices you just set the controls you know till it sounds good to you that's it's all personal preference uh, you know, the tone shaping of the, the voicing on the cab clone will get you pretty close to the ballpark, but you may have to adjust the channel EQs a little bit, the graphic EQ, whatever it is. But, you know, it's all personal preference. So there's no right or wrong to the amp settings for that. <laughs> So I love the workflow with Cab Clone. Compared to Cab Clone IR, where you've got a lot more options, here you literally have three choices. Well, technically four. Speaker on or off, which for all these demos, I had the speaker off. And then you choose between open back, closed back, and vintage in terms of the voicing that you can use with Cab Clone. And they're pretty obviously always using the open back voicing. Per what Maddie said a moment ago, you then just kind of dial in the face of the amp to what feels and sounds good to you. Of note is the fact that because I wasn't using the built-in speaker, I could goose the power amp session and get some extra tube compression. And for the next demo, I'm literally using the exact same settings, but all I did was switch cab clone into the closed back position. In the first video, one of the things John talks about is getting a piano-like quality from the clean channel. And that demo to me really kind of exemplified the essence of what I think he was going for. I was using a combination of the piezo and the Necmos magnetic pickup, just going straight into the amp, little Cooper time cube there in post for a little bit of stereo delay. But as I kind of descended the neck, moved from string to string and register to register, the volume of the notes and the tonality of the notes was incredibly consistent. And that's something that they've really nailed with this amp per John's tone mission. So the dual graphic EQs to me, it, it's such an incredible feature of the JP2C because it gives you just that much more versatility uh, as far as shaping an individual channel, getting to select one or the other and, and having them set completely different uh, from one another is, is just incredible. It's a great feature. <laughs>
when I'm in the studio, I have a tendency not to use the foot switch because I find that I step on it at inopportune times. And I don't always get the outcome I'm looking for as I'm sitting there tracking away. However, there's some great functionality the foot switch gives you, but you also have great control from the face of the app, which means you don't have to use this if you don't want to. This little guy here, first of all, allows you to toggle between channels. And on each one of the channels, there's a three-way mini toggle that allows you to select no EQ, EQ1, or EQ2. And the way that works is as follows. In the upper position, like I've got associated with channel three, it's associated with EQ1. In the middle position on the mini toggle, like I've got associated with channel one, it's in the off position, but you can engage it like that. And if I switch to another channel, it's going to remember that it was in that middle position. So it's going to default to off. You can also do the same thing via MIDI. Now I've associated EQ2 with channel two, which seems kind of strange, except for the fact that channel two is my highest gain channel. And generally, whatever my highest gain channel is, I've associated with the rightmost EQ. Now, why then am I not using channel three, which is actually voiced identically to channel two, but has a little bit more gain? Am I not using that for my higher gain tone? This is the exact same settings that I was using for that kind of beautiful cascading feedback earlier in the video. And for this particular tone, I've actually got the push-pull function on the gain control in the pull mode. And John's gonna tell you exactly what that does. So the, the pull uh, feature on the gain controls on channel two and three, um, I, I kind of use them to taste, you know, it's, it's a very subtle thing that's happening internally in the amp. Basically what you're doing by pulling is you're, you're taking uh, an internal set um, input sensitivity um, setting and you're just increasing it by, let's say, a couple of numbers. So if you think back to the classic, you know, C pluses and you had that first gain stage, maybe you'd set it to that you know, sweet spot between seven and eight. When you pull the gain control on the JP2C, it's like turning that up to nine. So think of it that way. So it's a very subtle increase on the input gain. So I love the shred feature on the JP2C. It's such a unique feature. Um, I will use that when I'm playing a guitar that's detuned, you know, maybe down to C, uh, maybe a baritone guitar, a seven string or an eight string. And I'll use it to, to shape the lower strings, even for an instance. So like, for example, if I'm playing live and I'm playing an eight string and um, it goes to a part where it's going to do a lot of work on the lower strings. I'll pop in that shred mode and it'll just give some nice clarity, some some additional gain in the upper, mid and high end, carve out a little bit of bass and, and actually make it just even that much more aggressive and percussive. So it's a great feature. The presence control has two different settings that Maddie's going to talk about in just a moment. The in setting is a little bit lower, the outer one's higher. Generally, I prefer the in setting, but the thing about that little track that we just heard is in many ways, it's kind of an homage, not an imitation, but an homage to Dream Theater. The kick drum is nice and loud, which means the snare needs to match that and the hi-hat needs to match that, which means that starts pushing stuff out of the way. So in terms of the rhythm guitar, that little extra bit of something on the top means you can actually turn the rhythm guitars down. You want them to hug the bass and the kick drum. In turn, they start to get out of the way, out of the melody slash harmony guitars, which again, then with the hi-hat and the snare that you get when you have a nice hot drum mix, you've got to kind of figure out how that guitar is going to poke its head above all of that stuff. And this is the magic potion for that. I actually prefer the sound of that pushed in, but as I was kind of tracking this thing, I kind of went, oh, I need that out. And to tell you more about that, here's Maddie. The presence control in the JP2C being that it's dual function, it's two different frequency points. The traditional pull in pulled mode, it's the traditional 2C plus presence frequency, which is a very uh, upper high end uh, frequency. And it's very, it's only got a small usable range. Uh, so about three or four on the old dial would be about where you would set it. Uh, whereas in pushed mode, the, it's a lower frequency range and it has a wider sweep. So you can use it a lot 
more, you can vary it a lot more and have, have use out of it. So in our case, you would put it around one o'clock on the dial or kind of towards the screw on the faceplate on channel two or three. That's a good marker for it. Uh, in pulled mode, you'd put it about 10 o'clock on the dial and that'll give you the traditional 2C plus presence. The built-in MIDI on the JP2C is awesome. It enables you to control multiple parameters with a single button press on your favorite controller. But there are some things that you can't control via MIDI. First of all, on the face of the amplifier, the placement, including push-pull functionality for any of the level controls for the tone and volume, so on and so forth. Ditto for the actual faders for the graphic EQs, although you, again, can control the functionality of the on and off function, just like you can with the foot switch. Around on the back side of the amplifier, there are three individual level controls for the reverb for each of the three different channels. You can turn the reverb on and off like you can with the foot switch, but you can't control the levels. And all the functions for a cab clone are set on the back of the amplifier. There's no MIDI control for that. But aside from that, MIDI dramatically expands what you can do again with a single button press or in the framework of a larger controller, lots of button presses. And to tell you more about that, once again, here's Maddie. So the MIDI functionality of the JP2C uh, was a, a request that I specifically asked for during the design process. Uh, and in all of the older Mesa amps um, up through, I believe, the Mark V, to get external control of the amp, they had control function jacks, quarter inch jacks on the back. And you could hook up a relay switcher or you could hook up other foot switches or you could use the you know, the included boogie foot switch. But for me, it was just a, a lot of extra stuff when you're putting a guitar rig together. Um, and we had just come off of uh, using the tri-axis preamps. So everything was MIDI and it was just, it, it's a simple cable and some programming and it's all set to go. The MIDI functionality of JP2C for us, it's just a no brainer. I can set up the foot controller. It switches channels. It switches the EQs. It switches the shred function on and off. It can switch the effects loop on and off if we want it to. Um, but I, I generally only program the features in that I absolutely want to control. Everything else is a hard set with the toggle switches on the amp. So it's, it's, a, it's the best of both worlds for us. So that gets us to the end of the second video in the series on the limited edition JP2C 112 combo. Next time around, I'm going to be once again joined by Maddie as we put together a crazy JP2C driven rig and you're invited. And if by chance you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we'd like to invite you to do so. Don't forget to ring the bell so I can let you know when that video goes online. I want to extend a giant thank you to John Petrucci and Maddie Schifferstein for all the time they've invested in this series. So grateful. Also want to thank the great people over at Mesa Boogie for the loan of this amplifier, as well as all my friends at Gibson Brands. Also want to thank the folks over at Ernie Ball Music Man for the loan of this instrument. And last, but in no way least, a giant thank you to you for watching. For more information about the limited edition JP2C 112 combo, please visit mesaboogie.com. And thanks again for watching.